Hey, you guys. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> oh, my gosh. How are you guys doing? How's things? So I finished these little guys. I'm so happy with how these guys turned out. I really am. And to be real honest with you, like I was kind of dragging on them because I wasn't, I don't know. It was like, I just didn't really know. Uh, I don't know. I, I guess I worked on them for a while and I kind of was just uninspired. And then suddenly I went, Oh my God, like these are kind of Christmassy, you know, and kind of not Christmassy. Like they could be Christmassy if you wanted them to be, you know, and I think it was just mostly the color, but also because I was using the calendar pages from that time of the year, you know, December here, there's a February and I think a January in here somewhere, but yeah, there's a January. Um, and then I just got super inspired because I never make Christmassy stuff. And I thought, well, you know, it's only April, but who knows? Maybe somebody wants a journal for December daily. And so I thought, well, I'm just going to kind of just kind of go with that. And um, oh, my God, I'm just I just love how they came out. Um, so these are the little uh, ledger page journals that I've been doing videos on. Um, <clears throat> and I'm sorry if I kind of dropped the ball on that. I just I I got to that point where I decided what direction I was going to go and I just went and I just went for it. Um, so I spent the last few days working on these, but um, yeah, super, super excited. <laughs> um, okay. So I'm just going to talk to you about some of the things that I've done that, you know, maybe you didn't see on the previous videos. If you've even watched them, you know, maybe you just want to watch the flip through. So we'll just kind of get to that. Um, I'm just going to leave a kind of a pile of them up here. I love having a pile of journals in front of me. Um, let me zoom in just a tiny bit. Uh, okay, so I do have the listings published. They're all ready to go. Um, and I will put a link in the description to my Etsy shop. I don't put a link to the exact listing because there is 19 listings. So, you know, they should be towards the top. And if you filter when you get to my shop, if you filter for most recent, then they'll come right up. Anyway, so I, uh, <laughs> I lost my, my box of, uh, Baker's twine for a long time. And then, I was like, I, would, I thought, you know, I got to use Baker's Twine on these because it's just, you know, they just, I just had to. I was really having a hard time with what kind of closure I was going to do on these. I didn't want to use elastic because, to be honest, you know, I just don't like the way it puts pressure on the, on the cover and I didn't want them to just start kind of breaking down over time because they are really just paper. You know, the covers are just... Uh, old antique paper and I've tried to preserve it as, as much as I could but um, anyway so they all have a long piece of baker's twine on them and uh, you know it's longer than you need but I thought it would be fun if you had a little bit extra so you could play with it you know um, and then as far as the charms uh, I went with a real lightweight charm I didn't want to do anything heavy and I wanted to do something that was kind of neutral, not really Christmas, but, you know, kind of neutral. And um, so you could use this any time of year, honestly. Like, I don't think people would look at it or you would look at it and go, that's Christmas. You know, you anyway. Um, so I just went with a, a little milk cap and then one of those little number tags. Uh, somebody said that these came off of... Um, like tags that were used on animals at some point. So I don't really know, but, uh, but they're really cool. And I just went like super over the top with numbers on these because I love numbers and I wanted to use my new stamps um, quite a bit. So, so I wound up just doing um, a tag on the front of each one. Some of them have the gold a lot of them have the um that really cool kind of lime green which i just love um and then i just embossed the number of the journal 
Uh, each journal has a number, and usually I do that on a little tag, but I thought, well, that'd be cool to just put it right on the front. And I did that with uh, embossing powder, you know, and then did a little bit more. Like each one has the number done um, with embossing, and then I did just like one of the little three-digit stamps embossed. You, you can feel it. Um, this, it's not coming through very well, but it's in the green. So anyway, um, there were some of these where I had a little bit of a oopsie on the uh, putting the, the clear pockets in. And so I wound up just using that Tim Holtz like fabric tape. And it's really sturdy, you know, it, it's holding, it holds really well. Um, some of the journals uh, just just to be safe, I went ahead and added some uh, added some uh, some book repair tape on the pockets where I felt like they may eventually over time potentially weaken or whatever. And so I, there's just these random kind of cool um, spontaneous pieces of tape on the cover. So I, I just thought that looks kind of cool too, you know, but it does actually serve a purpose. So anyway, that's what that tape is on some of them. Um, the ones that have the tape on the edges here didn't necessarily need that. So I didn't, I didn't add any, but anyway, so <clears throat> um, I used a bunch of that. Uh, there's a new, well, it's not new really, but um, it's an eight by eight uh, Tim Holtz uh, stack of paper that is kind of is kind of geared towards like Halloween, I think, but I forget what the name of it is. Uh, I'll try to find it and put a link in the description. But I wound up using pretty much that whole pack uh, in these journals and for the labels too. Um, so that's what that paper is, and I just love it. I think it's really cool. Uh, so some grid paper. And then I used one of the, uh, a page from my uh, architectural, oh my God, what's it called? That architectural book. Anyway, um, and that's kind of folded up so you can make it into a pocket or like a page that could flip down. Uh, some accounting type paper. Um, I used some pages from some of my, um, my old uh, French like school books okay so I used some pages out of these um, and then this is that that really cool like children's writing paper and I like to put pages in like this where you can extend it especially in a mini journal um, and then I used up a whole pack of that uh, it's also Tim Holtz uh, ephemera I don't remember the name of the pack, but it's got all the like black numbers and stuff, you know, and since I was so over the top with numbers on these, I thought, yeah, we got to use those. Um, and then I used um, a portion of a protector sleeve, like a card protector sleeve and cut those down. So, and they just fit perfect in here. So I just used part of the page. Um, and then I added, I just added a bunch of little goodies in the pockets. So a bunch of little labels, uh, different ones. And then, you know, I made sure I added some that were embossed, uh, different sizes and stuff. So you can use those throughout the journal, however you want. Um, I just wanted to add little, little goodies in these because I just think, you know, that's, that's what they're for. So, so they're kind of like a, not really a dashboard because it's not in the front, but you know. Um, and then I went and I used, I used a bunch of my little, um, and it's kind of hard to get stuff out of here if you have fat fingers, but I used a bunch of my paper punches and just punched, um, you know, into little, you know, punched my scraps. Um, this is like a ticket. And then uh, I actually bought one of those little mini envelope punches. So, um, so I punched out a bunch of those. So you get a bunch of those little mini envelopes, which I thought were kind of cool for like a Christmas type thing, you know? Um, so you could add little, 
I don't know, little gifts to yourself in little envelopes and just staple it on the edge of the page. Or, you know, you could store like a little piece of ribbon or something in there from a gift that you got or whatever. Um, and then just some little price tags. I'm not going to try to take everything out of those, but little little price tags. Um, some, uh, this is some onion skin paper and then some straw paper. And I put a really nice uh, piece of uh, either watercolor paper or like a heavy drawing paper in each journal. So this is kind of a, a heavy page that you could probably paint on. It would be nice. Um, just some little short pages. Um, some of that really cool penmanship paper that I picked up at a thrift store. And then I put I put a whole bunch of these. Um, I had bought one of those packs of the um, transparent, you know, butterfly wings and stuff. Um, that's a Tim Holtz thing. I guess these are my Tim Holtz journals. Um, and I've never used them. So I just thought, well, I'm just going to split that pack up amongst these journals. So you've got some butterfly wings in this little pocket. So don't forget those are in there. Um, onion skin, another little French school book page. Um, this is a ledger that I got actually as a gift from uh, my friend at the thrift store that I've been getting books from. So that's really cool. And some more grid paper, some more onion skin. This is a page from uh, this really neat old um, dictionary. Let me show you the dictionary. So from this old Webster's dictionary. So there's a there's a double page in there. I said the I'm trying to see what if it still has the copyright date in it. Yeah, 1906. So it's a really neat old dictionary. I love old old dictionaries. <clears throat> Um, you know, and then I put an envelope in the center of the, of the journal and I just cut the end open so you can glue that shut or not, how, whatever you want to do. Uh, I decided, you know, to stop sealing those up. I thought I'm just going to let people do what they want to do with that. Um, but I do love using an envelope in the center of the signature. Um, anyway, so then it's just the same going back the other direction. Um, then, you know, here's the other side of the pocket protector page. So I put just some little string tags in there, some red ones, and some of those really cool uh, jewelry watch repair tags is what those are. So the string just kind of hangs out. I punched out some tabs out of uh, kind of a heavy craft paper. So you'll get like four or five tabs that you can, you know, decorate or embellish however you want and use those throughout the journal. Um, and then I added an extra one of those little number um, tags and then also an extra milk cap. So here's some of those numbers from that pack that I was talking about, the Tim Holtz pack. There's some of the numbers. Um, and then another piece of this kind of, it's really cool, like grunge kind of metal. It's all like rusty metal. That's a paper pack that I have. Um, what else? What else is cool? Um, and so you'll notice that, you know, the front and back pocket are, uh, are clear. Um, these are actually printed on an inkjet printer. It's an overhead projector film uh, paper or pack uh, from Amazon. And I did discover the best, like the only way actually um, that you can print on this. And um, maybe I'll talk about that in another video, but there's a wrong side and a right side on that, on that stuff and you have to make sure that you're printing on the more um not the slick side there's a side that has kind of a little bit of a almost a tackiness to it and that's the side that you want to have down in the tray when you're printing so that when it feeds through the printer it goes up and back around and it prints on the on the bottom okay 
um, and that's how you can print on these with an inkjet printer. It is made for an inkjet printer. So if you buy that, just know that that's how you have to set it up in your tray. You have to put that that kind of tacky side down in the tray so that when it comes around, it prints on that side. Anyway, so I printed off a whole bunch of other little deal, little, little goodies um, on that stuff. And my print that, you know, the only thing I don't like about that EcoTank printer is that the yellow uh, jet gets clogged all the time and I have to clean it. And every time I have to clean it, um, I have to clean it like three times in order for it to clear out. And it's just kind of annoying anyway. So sometimes if I'm printing a lot, it'll actually start printing purple, like because there's no yellow coming through. So some of these actually came out sort of purple. These are some uh, French envelopes, some old antique like French envelopes um, that I scanned and printed off. Actually, I think this envelope was in the um, Eclectica pack. Um, but anyways, I just thought that was kind of fun to just print some envelopes on that transparency. And so also I'm probably going to go to prison um, at some point. So if you guys don't hear from me, at, you know, for months and months at a time, just, just know I'm probably in prison. But um, so <laughs> I scanned all of the month of December and I think I did January too. I was going to scan the entire, the entire, um, calendar, but I decided this December and January most fine. Um, anyway, so I scanned the whole month of December. And so I put a set of those in each one of the journals. Okay. So you have, uh, December one through 31 in your little journal. Um, and I know it's a 1963 calendar, so it's definitely, uh, you know, anyway, but it was printed in France and stuff. So I thought, well, you know, if they want to extradite me to France, that's fine. At least I get to go to France. Um, anyway, and then I just added a few other little bits in the, the pocket on the front and I'm not going to sell those by the way. I mean, I'm selling the journals and those are in there for so technically I am selling them, but I'm not going to sell them as a digital. So don't ask. Just saying. Um, <laughs> you have to buy one of the journals to get them. <laughs> anyway, um, so then just some other little bits inside the front pocket. Okay, so those are my uh, monthly minis for April. And they just happen to be, see there's a lot of this uh, Baker's twine on this one. Um, they just happen to be sort of geared. I mean, could be definitely used as a December daily. And I tagged them that way on Etsy and stuff. So, um, anyway, um, yeah, so free shipping in the U S if you're outside the U S, uh, I, and you know, you will have to pay shipping, but I kind of implemented a new policy where if you are outside the U.S. and you have to pay full price for shipping, I will give you a partial refund on shipping. Okay, so you can at least, you know, save a little bit on shipping if you're outside the U.S. These only weigh like seven ounces, so um, they could definitely go like first class international. So it would probably be about $15 and I'd wind up refunding you about $5 on that. So, okay. I, and the only reason I'm doing it that way is because in order for me to uh, price the shipping out that way, I would have to do it for every country. And that's just kind of a hassle, like really a hassle because you know how many countries there are. Anyway, um, so those are the French Ledger uh, page journals all finished up and ready for ready for new homes. Okay, so get them while they're hot. And yes, I did do a bit of a price adjustment due to the, you know, increase on, on seller fees, but, um, you know, I just did it across the board and, you know, it was just that 1.5%. So, you know, that's what we got to do anyway. Okay, guys, if you have any comments or questions, I'd love to hear, I'd love to hear them or read them, uh, leave them in the comments. Okay.
Thanks for watching, guys. I love you. Bye for now.